Johnny Galt with Iron Lotus Tattoo coming at you from Casa Grande, Arizona. Wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the secrets of black and gray photorealism part two. What I'm doing here is I'm actually reiterating and reinforcing the stuff that I talked about in the original video to help some of you guys out and learn some of the basics of black and gray photorealism. The point that I'm at in the tattoo is I'm still working with my black. I've used my mag to shade in the large areas of the black and start slowly building it in. I've got some of my overlay done with my solid black. I'm using my five round, long, uh, five round liner that's a, uh, it's a super tight long taper. I'm going to run through and I'm going to build in some of the edges and sharpen up some of the points that need to be sharpened. You never want to outline a portrait because portraits aren't really outlined. But what you do want to do is areas that need to be sharp, they do need to be sharpened up. Now keep in mind, I haven't done any of my mid-tones or my light tones because right now I'm still doing all of my black. So when the lighter tones go ahead and come in, that's when the tattoos are going to take place. But right now what we're really working with is kind of a skeleton frame. If you watch the first video, you're going to keep in mind that you always do want to lubricate the area that you're working in. We've got the stencil completely set up, even though it's been wiped quite a few times. I, I'm using my Cheyenne Thunder right now because my uh, my grips, my, my T-Tech Easy Grips for the front of my coil machines are not clean, so bear with me because I'm using a rotary here, but I'm getting the job done. So from here what I'm doing is I'm looking for my solid lines that I have placed in to represent where I have the dark points of my tattoo. These are the darkest points of the tattoo. Within the stencil, from the first video guys, if you remember, the darkest points are represented by solid lines, which are black. Right now what I like to do, is I don't like to go too deep or too dark when I'm doing these. I just put them in real quick to kind of make like a bloodline because you lose your stencil in this. I don't want to lose my road map from wiping too much or, you know, being kind of a busy bee. So I'm going to take my time, I'm going to get all of my lines on the outside and the outer shapes done. And then after I have my skeleton frame completely worked in, I am going to be able to work in all my black, all my dark stuff, and then I can work into my mid-tones, my light tones, my extra light tones, and then even my white. But right now what I'm doing is I'm just getting these in to try and help me maintain the stencil in a frame. A lot of people make the mistake of worrying too much about getting their dark stuff in um, and their, their mid-tones in and their light tones in too fast. And what happens is they end up working it, working it, working it. And they wipe and wipe and wipe and wipe and then they lose their stencil and they have no roadmap. Even though the lines that I'm initially putting in aren't perfect, they're assisting me in maintaining my stencil and my frame. So I'm keeping my road map basically, you know, basically I get to get my road map kind of engraved in stone, if you will, where I don't have to worry about wiping it away because I've got my solid points and I know where the lighter points belong within the tattoo itself. So like I said, guys, when it comes right down to it, when you're working with any of this stuff, when you're working with any of the, uh, any of the black and gray photorealism stuff, one thing you guys got to always remember, that you've always, always, always got to remember, is that your stencil is your road map. Your stencil is going to show you where to go. It's going to show you where to put every single one of your shades of black. And it is your friend. Your stencil really is your best friend. You can't take your stencil for granted in black and gray photorealism. What I'm doing right now is I'm continually building and building and building on my black to get my, you know, my, my frame completely done. And then once I have it done, I'm just going to work into my tones that are next to black. Once those tones are done and gone, I'm going to work the tones next to those, continually going until I get lighter and lighter. Now, I have put a little bit lighter of a couple of shades in right here and around the nose because those are my reference point shades. The reason I have those there is to make sure that if I'm putting something in, if it's dark or light, it's going to serve as a reference point between the two. Where yeah, I have my dark stuff in so I make sure I'm not putting something in too dark, but I want to have my light stuff in so I'm making sure I'm not putting it in too light. It kind of serves as a uh, 
a really, really great counterpoint to make sure that you're not messing up. It, it, it's really nice to have. I, I really can't explain to you how nice it is to have those, those reference points, you know, there and ready for you while you're working. So that's it for this really quick tutorial, guys, to help reiterate my point. Giving you guys a quick look at some of my work here, some of my black and gray work. This is a black and gray style called Noir. It's a European style of uh, black and gray. But like I said before, guys, remember to like, rate, subscribe. If you guys want to up your game and you want to use really good tattoo machines, remember you guys can purchase my handmade tattoo machines at www.pantherandagger.com. I'm running a sale right now for the next week where my machines that are generally $375 are only 175 a machine right now. It's not going to be going on for very long. So remember to take advantage of that because pretty soon the prices are going to shoot back up. Thanks for watching, guys.